In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a formula um, in the spreadsheet. And so I have, for an example here, three different geometric shapes. And you might remember from geometry that the area of a rectangle is equal to the length times the width. And so I'm going to fill in a length for this rectangle. I'll say that it's 24 units long and hit the tab button and go to width and I'm going to say that that uh, width is maybe um, 16. All right now I know that I could use a calculator and calculate length times width so I could go 24 times 16. In a spreadsheet though instead of typing in equals which I could do equals 24 and then the times is above the 8 button on a keyboard. So I'd have to hold the shift down. So shift 8 gives me that asterisk, which means times. And then I could type in the 16. Now, I could, so I could use the computer to do that calculation for me. And it gives me the answer, 384. But it doesn't really use the property of spreadsheets that is um, useful. And that would be, what if I wanted to change the width to something different? Let's say 10. So 24 times 10 would be 240, but my formula didn't change. I mean, my area didn't change on that. So, because it still says 24 times 16, now I could go in and edit it and put a 10 there. So, and now it, it is changed. Whenever I'm looking at formulas, I'm always looking up here at this um, corner of the spreadsheet where it says f of x equals so where whatever cell I go to that is the contents of the cell is in that spot so I have a formula here and it says equals 24 times 10 I'm going to delete that because there is a smarter way to do this so the smarter way to do it is to type in equals and then point to the length so I just go over I put equals and then I click on the length value and then I type in times, which is shift eight. And then I click on the width. And so in my formula, it says A3. So this is column A, row three. And then it says times B3, B3. And then I'll hit enter. And now it gives me 240. Now, if I change this back to whatever it was before, let's just say it was 15 it does that calculation for me automatically. I can change this to 34, and it will just always uh, calculate whatever's in this cell, A3, times B3, and give me the correct answer. So it's a useful property or use of spreadsheets to, to use the cell addresses. So that's what these are called, relative cell addresses. So it, when I type it in, it says take the cell that's two places to the left, which is A3, times the, the number that's in one cell to the left. All right, let's go down here. The uh, area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2. So let's just make up a base here. We'll say that the base is 13, and we'll say that the height is 5.3. And then I'm ready to... That's all that I need for a triangle. So base times height, and then I divide it by 2. So in my formula, I will start, any formula always has to start with an equals. Okay, so equals, and now I'm going to click on the base, which is 13, times the height, which is 5.3. So in my formula, it says A7 times b7. Now I need to divide by 2. So the division is the symbol right underneath the question mark on your keyboard. So I'll just type in that and then divide it by 2. So I will type the number 2 in and there it is. So 34.45 square units. Now I'm, I haven't been putting down what, what these are in units. We're just trying to get the idea of how to use the formula. All right, so a circle is pi r squared. And so I need to have a radius. The radius is the distance from the center out to the side. So let's say that that's um, 4. And that's the only thing in the formula other than pi. Now pi is a number. 
So I can type in equals. Now the pi, the number for pi is 3.14. And then I want to go times radius. And I could go times radius again. So I have 3.14 times a10 times a10. And I could hit enter. And it's going to give me the correct area for a circle that has a radius of 4. Now another way, some of you guys might say, well, it's pi r squared. So I'm going to delete that formula. And let's try it that way. Equals 3.14, which is pi, times, and I could come over here and click on the radius, because I can change that radius, and it will change the area. So a10 it is. And now for squaring, you can use a caret button, and the caret, is that little upside down V. Now you could use any power, but I'm going to go to the second power. So this means A10 taken to the second power. And get the same answer as I did before. Now if I change the radius to say uh, 15, it changes my area accordingly. So 3.567 or something like that. And you get, it always calculate the area. So it'll take that number times pi, that number squared times pi, and get my answer. Now just another thing to show you right here is this might be a little longer number of decimals than I really want. And so just a little formatting thing to show you is if you go up here underneath format, you see several things. Now we're going to use the money in a bit, but I want to show you that you can use this to increase or decrease the number of decimal places. And so I'm just going to hit decrease until it gives me just three decimal places. Um, maybe you don't even want, maybe you just want it to be to the nearest whole number. So you can just keep decreasing until it gets to the whole number. Actually, I'm curious, what would it do if I went one more? Nope, I thought maybe it might round it, but it doesn't. So you can increase or decrease your decimals um, by using those two buttons. Okay, so that was formulas. Again, you need to have an equals. Then you point at the things that are determining my formula, in this case, length. So I pointed at the length, and then hit multiply, which is shift 8, and then times the width. On this formula here, and you can look at it right up here in the corner, it says A7 times B7 divided by 2. So A7 is the base, B7 is the height, so base times height, and then divided by 2. Uh, and then finally, for our circle. It was pi. So pi is a number that really doesn't end. This is just an approximation for it. 3.14 times a10, the cell, to the second power. Or we could have gone a10 times a10. So that's kind of a general idea of how to use um, formulas in a spreadsheet. We're going to go over here to this side and we're going to have a price per gallon um, somebody said earlier, I think gasoline in Savannah was $2.32. Now this is a price, so I'm going to format that using the little dollar sign and call it currency. And so there it is. And now in my spreadsheet, I'm going to type in a bunch of different gallons. So let's say somebody only buys five gallons of gas, somebody buys um, six, somebody buys uh, ten, Somebody buys uh, 15, somebody buys uh, 12. There's no specific, I'm not trying to go in order in any way. Somebody said they had a 40-gallon vehicle. So anyway, we have all these different numbers of gallons, and we want to find out what's the cost for all of those. So I could go up here and type in equals the number of gallons, and I could just type in times... 2.32 and it gives me the right amount of course I want that in money so I will put format as a currency so there took 5 times 2.32 and gives me my answer now if I go to the um, instead of going all the way down I could keep doing that equals this times and I could go equals let's just show you equals the 6 times 2.32. That's still a lot of typing, right? Instead, what I could do 
is when I did my first formula, I can copy that formula all the way down. Now notice when my cursor comes over the little um, square in the right hand corner, bottom right hand corner, it turns into a plus and I'm just going to drag that down to all the rows. And then it copied that formula all the way down. So it took this one times 2.32, which was my original one. It took G6 times 2.32, took G7 times 2.32, etc. And it copied. Notice each time I moved it down, it just always kept using the cell to the left of it. So like on this bottom one, it took the cell G11, and G11 is the cell right here, times $2.32. Now, what if I changed my dollars per gallon to say two seventy one? Say price went up two dollars and seventy one cents. Now, I would have to go in and change all of those. Well, actually, not too hard. Just type change that cell to two seventy one, and then I could drag it all the way down. And did it do it? I'm not sure. So 271, and then I drag that down. Yeah, I don't know, the first time it didn't take, but this time it did. So if I go down here, 40 gallons, G11, times $2.71, and you can check it on a calculator just to make sure it does work. All right, now we're going to do one step better than that, and that is make, and you might have wondered why we didn't do this to start with, so if I typed in equals this cell, G5, I guess, uh, and multiplied it by this one up here, which is the price per gallon. So 5 gallons times $2.71 per gallon, and I get the right number, right? But if I copy that down, I get some goofy things in here. So what's going on? Because that worked before, right, when we did it. So let's just look at this cell here. I would want it to go 6, this cell, times this cell. And it does say G6. That's correct. But instead of saying where the um, $2.71 is, which is in uh, cell H2, it says H3. In other words, it it kept sliding that cell down by one also. I don't want that. I always want it to reference this one cell. So the way that you can do that is called absolute cell references. And the way to do it is you put a dollar sign, and it's like a sticky, kind of think of the dollar sign as a sticky key. And so I'll put a dollar sign right in front of the two in my formula. So now this formula says G5 times H dollar sign 2. And now when I copy that down, I get good answers. Uh, it says G6 times H2. This one says G7 times H dollar sign 2. This one says G8 times. So in other words, it always kept the H2 referenced. Okay, so that's called an absolute cell reference. All right, let's go over to, so this, is, you should have filled this in, so if you needed to pause the video to work on your own, go ahead and do that. And what I'll be looking at is the cell formulas. So don't just type in the number, <laughs> you need to use the cell formula. So here, you would type in the equals, and then click on the A3, then times B3. Um, all right, the next.